Um, so I think it's a very difficult task to describe who was the mother. It's a question that can be that can be answered at a lot of different levels. I mean, in terms of her kind of as a human being on this planet, um, and she was a French, uh, French national, but of uh, Egyptian and Turkish descent, and um, she was widely seen as a, as a as a mystic and as a charismatic leader, as a guru um, here in India for her, yeah, her abilities, her mystical abilities, her spiritual abilities. Um, and the, this name that she has, the mother, is a name that Sri Aurobindo gave to her um, because of what she embodied. And, and when Sri Aurobindo speaks of the mother as a concept, it's really this um, consciousness, um, this, this power of, of consciousness and of manifestation of that consciousness here in the world. And he felt that she fully embodied that energy and that power and therefore that name. So the mother is an equal and spiritual partner of Sri Aurobindo. Uh, and I mean, she herself had said that without Sri Aurobindo, the mother would not exist. And without the mother, Sri Aurobindo would not have been manifest. Uh, she created all of it at that time, uh, I think, to realize true human unity. She, I mean, it's also been called the cradle of the Superman, which means it's uh, the what Sri Aurobindo talked about, conscious evolution, uh, and the more spiritual being uh, rather than the correct current what we call mental being, which is true. I mean, we are doing a lot of things with the power of our mind, but there is something beyond, and so yeah, for that, how the mother envisioned Aurobindo. Uh, and how uh, she has given guidelines, but she hasn't necessarily made rules. So she has created something, right? if you think of the charter, that would inspire people to come and be part of Aurobu. So I think it's that still sense of having freedom and wanting to be your best uh, that is bringing people, that's continuing to bring people to Aurobu. You see, if you think in terms of Indian spiritual traditions, you realize that all of those traditions were meant for individual growth and liberation. Yes, you had ashrams, you had a set of practices and processes, but in the end, they all posited individual liberation, so to say. Shurgan and the mother, on the other hand, turned this on the head. And they say the goal is not liberation, the goal is about transforming earth, transforming the material conditions of how we live and uh, yeah. And this to them was not just an individual endeavor, but a collective endeavor. She was somebody who made you look within and deeper as if she was so porcelain-like, so subtle in her physical that you didn't get stuck in the physical. She would just, her eyes would just move through the material form into... And then you could come to a pool or to something where she and yourself were together. So it, she is like a very clear, very loving, very sweet, honey-tasting passage into realizing 